Stanley Martin Lieberman was born on December 28, 1922, in New York, New York. From a young age, he loved to read, and it was his favorite pastime. Influenced by his beloved books and films, he wanted to create stories that inspired people. At the age of 10, he was reading the works of Shakespeare, the novels of Mark Twain, and being consumed by films of Errol Flynn. As a young adult, he worked his way up through a series of jobs including an office boy, an editorial assistant at Timely Comics, and promoted to the editor. In the 60s, Timely Comics would turn into Marvel Comics. Well, I feel like I've become... Well, I've definitely been more invested in comic books as a whole and Marvel because I've gotten... Well, I've gotten to know you, for example. You're, you're a big impact on my life, and you're the person that I know most who likes Marvel. So I feel like I've made a friend based off of it, and I also feel like I've developed myself as a person because I've learned things through watching these movies. In 1961, in collaboration with artist Jack Kirby, the Fantastic Four was created. What made their creation so unique was this family was a relatable, dysfunctional one, which stood out in the repetitive superhero genre. It was a success, and one year later, Stan saw a spider on the wall and thought of a man who could walk on them. His publisher told him it was a terrible idea, but he still went to Steve Ditko to draw him, and Spider-Man was born. Spider-Man was the first teenage superhero who had all the problems that came with being one family problems, girl problems, and best friends at school. The most relatable superhero. Stan wanted to take the teenager from being a sidekick to being the main hero. Lee, Kirby, and Ditko adopted a collaborative workflow that came to be known as the Marvel Method. And it allowed Marvel to produce new content at a dizzying rate. This helped to create other comic book icons, including the Incredible Hulk, Daredevil, and the X-Men. You know, you just look at that, and that, like, that's not even the full extent of Marvel movies out there. You have, you know, Sony's Spider-Man stuff, you got the X-Men movies, you got Fantastic Four. The point, like, and that's just movies, of course, there's also comics that are, like, going out, like, you know, the average Marvel movie fan might not even know that there's a whole universe of comics out there with a bunch of other storylines. Stan Lee literally shaped a universe with his bare hands, of course with some other help with like, people like his wife and Steve Ditko. Um, he's just, he's an incredible person. Um, his impact on pop culture is, it's hard to explain. It was to show that bigotry is a terrible thing. Lee stood at his typewriter at a terrace at his Long Island home, trying to come up with some more heroes. First came the characters, a guy who shoots beams from his eyes, a human ice machine, a telekinetic teenage girl, and their mentor, a telepath in a wheelchair. But how do they get their powers? They were separate people who weren't connected to each other, so that would be a hell of a job. Heroes like the X-Men and Spider-Man is what made Marvel, and more specifically Stan Lee, so popular because his engaging characters made the reader empathize and relate to them. In Fantastic Four, number 52, dated July 1966, Black Panther was introduced. His inclusion was a historical moment not just for comics, but for culture. Black Panther was the first mainstream comic book character of African descent, which was massive, especially because this comic came during the height of civil rights movement in mid-60s. Stan was known for defying what was comfortable at the time. In the 70s, an issue of Spider-Man depicted Harry Osborn as a drug addict, which was against the comics code, but Stan published it anyways. The comics code was rewritten for Stan and Spider-Man. Well, Stan Lee, I mean, uh, God, you know, God rest his soul, I mean, he really bridges the gap between the real, the origins of, the, of this comic book series and the modern day uh, reader. Uh, and viewer of the movies. Um, he may not have created every single character um, that we're seeing uh, on the screens, but he's a direct link, or was a direct link, uh, to the very you know, early stages and origins of all these great characters. Um, and for him to be able to you know, see uh, firsthand um, what you know, has become of all these great stories that he was you know, early, you know, early on involved with it, just in terms of writing and, um, 
in creating these characters. I mean, you know, for him to just be able to see that, um, I mean, wh what a life that guy had. Defying the genre stereotypes, creating diverse characters in a time when diversity wasn't as accepted in mainstream media, and making his heroes have relatable traits and stories are some of the many reasons that made Stanley a pop culture icon and legend.